What's up, guys? It's Josh with Navigate the Wild, and it is about quarter to five. We're going on a pig hunt tonight, but we're not going on a rifle hunt. We're going to go on a bow hunt, and we're not just going on a bow hunt. We're going to climb tonight. We're going to take the saddle out. We're going to get ready now that we're kind of counting down the days to bow season. I like to do this one or two times before the season actually kicks off, where I get reintroduced to all of my gear, where everything is, all the orientation comes back into play. I get used to wearing the weight into the woods because I wear my saddle into the woods. I like to get everything in place in my pockets as well as my pack. I like to put on my bino harness and my, have all my gear with me, get my bow ready, and get it into the woods. I do that for two reasons. One, it's kind of a safety check overview of everything when I'm doing it, especially the first time. I'm always checking my harnesses. I'm always checking my ropes, making sure there's no frays in them, making sure everything's where it needs to be. It just always helps to be able to then take it and go hunt as long as everything is in place. It also allows me to inspect some of my trees. And I'm constantly checking trees here in Florida, especially out near a swamp where things get saturated. And I can't tell you how many times things have fallen, trees have fallen into stands, into paths, but also you want to check the trees that you consistently climb. So I've got one in particular tonight that I'm going to climb that I've been working on. It looks good. I hunted it out of it last year. I got a pig out of it. I got a few deer out of it. Um, and we're going to go into the field tonight, set everything up as if we're going for a deer, deer hunt, and I'm hoping to put a pig down. What I need to do is go over my gear, make sure we're all set up with my uh, Kafaru Shape Charge here, go over my gear with my saddle, uh, my pockets, my tools, like my snips and my saw and my thermocell. I also need to put a few broadheads on some arrows and just send them down range and make sure everything is good to go. Getting to the tree, unpacking things, getting it up into the tree. And I'm going to try to do my best to capture all of that stuff and kind of how I set my tree up and all that stuff. Just hanging out. The first official father-daughter deer hunt of the year. The stand was 16 feet in the air and she did great. So we're going home. Take your kids hunting. It's fun. Man, I won't do that again. That's how you learn. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is very briefly go over just a few things in my Kafaru pack. I bought this pack last year. I have been so over the moon with this pack. This thing has been great for me. I always carry just a little blood type patch on my Kafaru and a few other places. God forbid anything happens. Um, that is there so people will be informed. I also carry a 511 uh, reflective glow in the dark strip on the side of my pack. Here it is. It's on the side of my Sherman pocket and it just helps me find things. Mainly if like I leave my pack for some reason near a certain location, maybe I get to the bottom of the tree, I take my pack off to kind of go look for a blood trail or something. Um, I don't have a hard time finding it. So that's that. My Sherman pocket really consists of like um, backup stuff. I have a lot of ties a lot of zip ties, a lot of these quick ties, toilet paper. Um, I have a few first aid items. I have my, my backrest for my saddle in here. But that's really just odds and ends that I carry in this pack. I have backup clips because these have fallen off in the past. My Kafaru clips. I have backup am steel uh, in case I get to the field that I notice something is frayed. So that's really what 
my Sherman pocket carries. I usually do zip ties up front in this front pouch here, Ziploc bags, you just never know. You know, this is kind of my odds and ends pouch, okay? Very simple. Uh, in the front here, this is where I usually carry like <laughs> cough drops, lens wipes for glasses, thermocell. Sometimes I'll throw like my glasses if it's getting really foggy or something like that. My keys will usually go up there in the front pouch. This one here, I always carry a, a spotlight with me. Um, I have a backup O-light, just a backup flashlight. Can never have too many flashlights. Reflective tacks. I have a work sharp field sharpener as well as a backup black rock carabiner, a headlamp or something like that. So all of that's good. The main compartment of my, of my pack here tends to be pretty i like things streamlined i like things clean i carry a few things that i don't use all the time i've got my buck call and my doe bleat those are always attached i never take them out um these are the mediator edition phelps bleats and uh this is the beta pro i just keep them attached to the molly system here with a little loop so i can reach in and grab them this chamber pocket, all I carry in this chamber pocket is a backup release. You just never know, man. So this is the uh, the wise guy from Spot Hog. This is the Cam Haynes edition with the BOA um, attachment. Really good release, but I, that's all I put in that, uh, that chamber pocket. In case I get up into the tree, because I'm usually shooting with a Carter, Carter Insatiable. But I've gotten into the tree before and this has slipped out of my hand and it's too late in the day, I can't get down there and get it. So I have a backup. These are the Latitude knee pads. I normally don't use knee pads, but trees can be pretty rough here. And so I usually carry those at the very bottom because I don't use them often. Um, but I like to have them just in case. I have a first aid kit. It's blaze orange, big cross on the front, and I've got it stacked full of minor things and major things. Um, anything from antiseptic wipes and band-aids to tourniquets and wound care, all kinds of stuff. So that never leaves, that's safely attached. That way, if there was ever a uh, first aid emergency, I don't have to say, well, it's here. Just open my pack, it's orange, you can't miss it. It's got the cross on it. This is my kill kit, and in my kill kit, I just have tools. It's basically just tools and blades for my kit, my field dressing, okay? So that, that doesn't leave either. That just lives right there. And over the top here, I just have a DACA light pouch from Magpul. I love the, Mac, uh, the DACA series from Magpul. Uh, if you know anything about my channel, you know I'm a big fan of these. I fish with a lot of them. But all this holds in here are game bags and a deer drag or a kill drag, whatever. Uh, just makes it easier to get animals out of the woods when you're pulling with your whole body or picking them up and putting them on. I'm getting a little older, so I tend to more drag. All right. Um, the fronts here, basic, just stuff that I use, thermocell stuff. Uh, I have a predator call. I have a lighter. I have um, a hanky. Things like that, very simple. And then this bottom one is more gear ties, reflective tape, um, more tacks, you know, stuff like that is what I carry in here. More am steel. So all that stuff kind of goes in there and it may look like a lot, but it really isn't. I got, you know, more thermocell. We use a lot of thermocell down here this time of year because the bugs are just out of control. So, that's everything that goes in the pack. And this looks great to me. So when I'm getting ready for a hunt, this would basically, I would check this off. I go, okay, this is good. Sherman pocket is connected. Before I do that though, I'm gonna show you how I orientate my sticks and my platform on this pack. It tends to get a little heavy, but that's okay. I don't skip gym day. Actually, that's a joke. I always skip gym day, but I'll be fine. This is a cruiser platform. I ran this platform last year with a Amsteel guy 
connector and this is a little more complicated than the buckle system. So again, I just wanna get reorientated with getting it on the tree. When you're doing it consistently, it's it becomes a no brainer, but I haven't done this all year, you know, since January to now, I haven't climbed. I probably should be, but I just, ha I've been busy. So I'm gonna get this out tonight. So what this does is this sits right on here and then my straps right through the triangles in the platform and it just cinches down nice and tight just like that so that's not going anywhere that's in place the next step i am running the latitude carbon stick system i've got four my first two have 11 feet of am steel so i can get around big trees every tree tapers as you go up but especially here the cypress trees get big at the base and then they taper pretty quick. And these are just gonna rest right here. Sherman pocket goes over and then it clips right there. And this one clips right here. And we're gonna cinch it down. That's my whole setup, just like that. That's how it goes in on my back. And I'll usually throw like a Nalgene bottle in the side filled with element. Tethered Phantom saddle. I have just decided to modify as best I can. So I modified the Cobra buckle, this is a Blue Alpha belt with a Cobra buckle. I've got the yoke system on my for my shoulders. This is a great investment, and it dis, it's much better than not having it, and it's a step up from the suspender system, which I have ran the last two years. I got my flex pouches. These are 9-inch flex pouches, and all I do is open them up. Here's my hang your stuff strap. I make sure that I have my bow hanger. Um, I'm also got a backup bow hanger. This is the hero clip. I just briefly and quickly look over my uh, tether. This is going to attach me to the tree. I've already inspected my Kong duck. In the other pouch, I've got my bow rope, which I've inspected. This is, um, just boat rope that I use with a quick connect. This will hold 75 pounds, so my bow is no problem. And then this is my lineman's belt, and I just go over my lineman's belt. I like to be able to get to the tree and systematically pull things out in order of which I orientate them to the tree. So I'm gonna to get to the tree and I'll show you all this. I'm going to drop my pack. I'm gonna attach my, my platform to my Genesis 3D Quick Connect. I'm going to put two sticks on the front saddle system here, right off the front of my flex pouches. I'm gonna put two on the tree. That's what happens. When you get to a tree and you're starting in saddles, at first it's a little daunting because you have to remember all the steps, but when you do it over and over again, it becomes repetition. My lineman's rope always stays connected. This is an upgraded uh, clip from Kong Duck. I like it because it's if the red is showing, danger, danger. Okay, so you just tie it, you know, lock it in place, we're good to go. And that stays connected. And because it's so big, it gives me a few more inches of wrap around. So I like that a lot. Okay, so this goes back in. And while I'm doing this, I'm just looking for any phrase. I have been through a few belts because you know, I'm trimming something with a handsaw or something while I'm going up and I hit it. And once it gets a fray, it's toast for me. This is the fob. This is, uh, it's got the airframe, range finder, binos, which I don't really need. I'm going to be pretty close, 15 yard shot. Not that bad, but I do have backup battery here and my cell phone will sit in the nav pouch, wind checker, and of course the Montana Knife Company Speedgo 2.0. Okay. Next up, we're going to load up our quiver with some arrows. We need to check our flight. And so I'm going to run, I forgot what G5s the are, these are. A couple years back, Easton, I think it was Easton. Easton brought out this little, this little system I really enjoyed. Um, I think it's called the Stay Sharp, and it just stores... Your broadheads safely. It's double sided, and all your broadheads sit right in there, right? And so it will hold. You just 
They even come with these little covers for the screws. And you pull it out, and there's my G5. And it holds mechanicals. I normally run the fixed blade. When you pull out the broadhead, you screw this off, this end off. Broadhead goes in, just like that, perfecto. But I need to ensure that these things are flying good. Money. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted. It's right there in the kisser. Nights like these, they seem magical. I don't know what it is, but you're walking into the woods and you just feel good. You know, it's like, ah, oh, man, I'm here. And you know that people have come before you. And you know that people are going to come after you. But for this moment, it's like this place is yours. This is the first climb of 2024. And it just feels right. It feels really good. I'll see you at the tree. Everything is secure and not in each other's way because you can get your sticks tangled up. You can get your hoist tangled up. So everything is out of each other's way. Before I go to my lineman's belt, you can see here how I've con connected this to the tree. So on the carbon stick, I go through the hole and then around to avoid any type of slip off. When you upgrade your, your AM steel on this, it's a little thicker, so it won't fit in this wedge like you want it to. So it's best to put it through the hole. The second one is loose. That way I can put my lineman belt on, get on my first stick, go up and reposition this one. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, you can see the crisscross action here. This is the AM steel that comes with the latitude stick out of the box. It's great, it's just not that long. I think it's eight foot. There we go. So I'm completely attached to the tree. My Kong duck is in place. My carabiner is locked. My bridge is set. My backup safety is in place backpack is off it's hanging there's not many bugs right now i got my hero clip just works so perfect for bow hunting and i'm about 14 feet up so i'm gonna hoist up my bow and get it into place i always tuck the excess strap over my pack so i have nothing in my way it's just my bridge and me the bow is knocked ready to rock and I'm gonna try and set up my tripod from the tree in case I get a shot off. It's probably a stupid idea, but I'm gonna try anyway. See if I can rig it up. What a beautiful night. We're up about 16 foot. You can see where they've been traveling.
that's the closest I've been to him. I had him right here at 10 yards behind palm fronds. And he did exactly what a smart pig would do. He circled around. And he walked out on the trail that I walked in on. He would not come into the feeder. Pigs don't have good eyesight, but they have great noses. And so he walked in to the trail that I walked in on. Had I walked in behind me, I probably would have got him. But I really didn't know where he was coming from. Now I know kind of his trail and where he's coming from. sit tight but I don't think he's coming back that might be checkmate for tonight Tyler saw all kinds of deer tonight. He was in the hot spot. My feeder over there was out. So, what a great night. Weather was perfect. I'm gonna start packing up here. Tonight was really about um, getting in the woods, knocking the dust off the gear, knocking the dust off of my muscle memory, getting back into a tree, making sure I could do all that stuff. And if I got a shot at a pig, great. So we're going to just let it settle. <laughs> as much as I want to be out there chasing pigs, like now's not the time. So they're definitely not going anywhere. Um, but hopefully that kind of helps you understand a little more about saddle hunting, getting into a tree. I just wanted to try to capture what that was like. I don't know that I did it justice. Thanks for watching. And uh, man, September 14th can't come soon enough navigate the wild.